everyone. I am very excited. I have had this wonderful package in the post from lovely Tanya sent me this um, set of pencils. She did tell me it was coming. It's a little bit of confusion about delivering it because for some silly reason I gave her my parents postcode instead of my own. I don't know why. <laughs> so it almost went off to the wrong place. It took a long time to be delivered. But here it is, all exciting in its crinkly packaging. So uh, let's unwrap. Oh, there we go. And uh, here we are. We have inside a tin of Derwent drawing pencils. Professional quality, highly light, fast drawing pencils. Now, I know they're for drawing, but um, they were on my wish list because Tanya did contact me and uh, say to me, take them off your wish list because I have ordered them for you. But I was never intending to use them for drawing, but for colouring. Now, I'm just going to see if we can get in. So it's that that talks about Derwent in there, so we won't read that. But here we have the set of pencils, so we can have a look at the colours. I think I'm just going to open the plastic. I'm actually going to grab a pencil and just pop through it. There we go. And then I can take this off. So they're not sharpened to a very sharp point, I have noticed. So I may have to um, sharpen them all before I uh, before I do very much. Um, I don't know why that... Hmm. There's something on the back that's stuck, which is a little odd. I'm going to take off the plastic, whoops, and return the lid onto the tin. Hold on a minute. And turn it over. We've got this sort of security tag. Ooh. Oh, there's a little hole, look. That it's sort of attached into. Okay, well that's fine. Let's put that on the floor for now. So here we have our colours. So we can see they're very earthy colours. So we've got sort of browns and greys, sort of bluey greens and olivey greens, orangey siennas, and lovely, a really lovely range of colours. Now I've got one of these already. It's the crag green. I don't know. I think it's probably this one, that's Oliver. I'm not sure where it is. And it's really nice. I've also got the um, Chinese white already. But here they all are. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stop the video. I'm gonna go away, I'm gonna sharpen them all because they're far too um, thick on the end, look. Although they are, maybe we can do that edge. I'm not sure. So I just show you one anyway. We've got a brown barrel. We've all got the same colour barrel, England Derwent drawing. We've got the name and the number. Now I don't know if these names tie up to the Derwent names of their other brands. I mean there is an Olive Earth in the um, um, Light Fast set. So I'm not sure if that sort of ties up with that or not. Um, and we've got a black here as well. Now I tell you what I've got to colour. I'm going to try, and if it's if they need sharpening, I shall stop and go and sharpen them all. Just put them to the side like that. I've grabbed my circle of life book. Someone's asked me to do a picture from here, so I thought I would combine it with a sort of pencil, sort of review, not really a review, a sort of tryout really. So I found this um, picture here. Whoops near the back of the book, oops, which had a lot of um, greenery in. So it's actually got some blue in as well, but I think we can do that, which I thought would work with the more earthy tones of this set of pencils. Um, I didn't know exactly what tones they had in them because I hadn't looked, but I think we can use them all on this page. So I think that will be fun. So, um, if I think we could work through our tin and colour things. So our first colour is called Light Sienna. 
can see it's a really light brown. We're going to come in a little bit closer, not too close because I want you to see the whole page. So what should we colour in a light brown? Well, we've got these newts, though they're not, they're tadpoles, aren't they? So we've got spawn, tadpole, tadpole. I think we'll colour this tadpole in this colour just to see what it looks like. So it's quite um, vib more vibrant. I thought it would be really pale, but I'm not pressing very hard. We've got a fair bit of vibrancy, which is nice. I hope you can see that going down. It's, you know, it's not the lightest and brightest, um, the um, most, sorry, dark colour. It's a light colour. But it's a really pretty, slightly orangey beigey colour, a colour that I don't actually have, I don't think really. I'm trying to sort of think what I could compare it to, but I don't really have anything. So this is our sort of tadpole, I guess. I'm going to leave him just with that one colour. He's got his sort of spiny bit. I'm going to use a different colour for that because um, we just want to test, run through them and test them all really. Now we've got a sort of um, Solway blue. It looks very grey to me, um, holding it here in my hand. Um, and I'm thinking these sort of um, tops of the um, water, like the sea foam or splashes, it looks quite silvery to me. It's a very pretty colour actually, I think. These are very Hokusai, aren't they? These waves. So I'm just going to do a few more. I'm not going to do all of them right now because I'm excited to look at the next colour. Um, so uh, that's uh, rather fun. I'm just going to do this sort of section. Now I'm thinking these bits might need to be in this colour too, but I think it might need to be sharpened for that. I have got a Derwent sharpener that I'll probably use for them. Now this is a really dark colour. This is called Ink Blue. Um, but I am, let me see, what else have we got? We've got another blue. Hmm. I'm just looking at what we've I'm thinking I use it for this bit because it's quite dark and this is almost like a sort of separation it's quite bluey green this isn't it is that me or is it more grey certainly looks quite indigo-y which for an ink blue would make sense so I'm thinking this bit I do like these tones it's a very soft pencil. It reminds me a bit of the Derwent Colour Soft. It's almost like colouring with a pastel pencil. It's got that sort of chalky feel to it, which is really nice, I think. Okay, here we have a smoke blue. This is quite grey, quite bluey, but I'm going to use it for the waves, I decided. Now I find with um, Melponomy's books that there is a lot of little details and it can become quite daunting if you try and think about doing every single one. But if you um, do what I'm doing and sort of approach a whole section in one go, like I'm ignoring all these lines, I'm just colouring right over them and that's making it far easier to colour. I also find that her pictures can be quite dark. There's a lot of black lines because there's a lot of detail. So I try to um, think about that, whether I want the picture to be a dark picture. If I want it to be a little lighter, what am I going to do to uh, lighten it up a little bit? And uh, sometimes that means that I use lighter colours um, or brighter colours. So we'll We'll see how this one works out. So we're moving on to the pale cedar. So this is a greenish colour. Um, where should we put a green? We've got a frog. Um, hmm. 
we've got quite a lot of greens coming up so I'm just having a think um, I think I'm going to do this middle a lily pad with it lily pads aren't normally this sort of tone of green but that's rather pretty I love that sort of slightly yellowy browny green shade it's really nice now I'm going to end up doing my lily pads all different colours because we have different shades of green to try out. Um, you might not want to do that. <laughs> you might want to. I think I would rather have some consistency between them all, but for the purposes of this exercise, we're going to try them out. Look at that. Like that. I hope it shows up well enough for you. Now we have a colour called Green Shadow really interesting. Um, I'm going to use it on this one. I've got to be careful on this one. It's quite grey green this one which is what I was expecting and actually it's really dark. I've got to make sure that the um, spines of our newt or not newt, tadpole, um, don't get obscured with green. I need to remember that I need to do those. It's a little odd that very first colour is not, that's not the place I would have put it. You know me, if you've watched my videos before, you know that I always like to reorder all my pencils and it drives my husband <laughs> absolutely bonkers. I'm going to do it in here before I go next door and show him them and he won't know. <laughs> Does that mean? Yeah. He'll make him feel better because he won't know. I'm trying to work out what that is as well as I colour this in. Um, not really sure. <laughs> now Derwent pencils generally, um, I like to support Derwent because they're a British company and I'm obviously British, so that's nice. But I do find that they sometimes break quite easily, which can be a little disappointing. But I haven't found a brand that doesn't apart from Polychromos and um, Stedler which are much harder pencils so it's sort of what you might expect from a slightly softer pencil really um, I did ask Derwent about it and they um, recommended their own pencil sharp um, when I said to them you know I've had these break what sharpness should I use they said well we would recommend our own brand choose one we'll send it to you so they did so I've got a nice um, hand crank Derwent sharpener which is really difficult to get the broken leads out of. Um, I've also been gifted a dowel sharpener which is also a hand crank sharpener. It's much much easier to get the leads out of, um, much quieter and um, cheaper. So I think it's probably better but I do tend to use the Derwent one for my Derwent. Now this is the Crag Green which is colour that I've already got and uh, I'm going to use it on this lily pad. Um, yeah I've got one because uh, what I tend to do is when I'm thinking about do I want pencils if they're available in open stock I get one and then I try it and see if I like it and if I like it then I, uh, I decide that I'm going to pop them on my wish list. Now sometimes I buy myself things off my wish list and uh, treat myself or ask people if they want birthday ideas, Christmas ideas to, to if they could get me something and I take it off but other times it just sits there. I, I From time to time I go and have a look and I take things off or put things on. Um, it's, uh, it's quite sparse at the moment just because I've got a lot of beautiful items and uh, I'm also getting a new bookcase soon I've been banging on about it for ages and I haven't ordered it yet I need to I wanted to oh I need to talk to my husband about it because I need some space to put it and he his stuff is in the space and I said to him I want him to move his stuff first before I order it so I know there's definitely space for it and uh, then I'm going to order it and then I'm going to put my things or reorganize all my coloring things and then I'll know where I'm at. So that'll be nice. So you can see that colour, I think it's 
remarkably similar to that. I can't tell a huge difference. That one looks a bit greyer, but these two look really similar. It's quite interesting. And now we have got the olive earth. Now there is an olive earth in the um, light fast set, and this is very similar um, in colour, but not in texture. Um, the light fast can be, if you press as hard as I am, which isn't that hard, they can tend to feel a little bit sticky almost, but these don't. These feel, um, as I say, a bit more chalky, which is pleasant. Um, and actually I'm managing to colour quite well without sharpening them on those edges. I know people say you should sharpen them all first because um, they have um, might have chemicals on from the machines and or a coating or whatever, but uh, I'm too lazy. Sorry. But yeah, if you have trouble with a brand new pencil, do sharpen it. I was interestingly reading that the other day that someone was having trouble with their Caran d'Ache pencils saying they were either too crumbly and dry and scratchy. I've had that trouble with Caran d'Ache too and uh, I wrote to Caran d'Ache and they asked me to send a photo. They have a barcode on Caran d'Ache pencils. Um, um, oh, it's, it's sharpened off that one. It's going to show you. No, and I sent them a photograph of it and they looked at the batch and one of them was from a faulty batch and the other one was really old and they actually sent me replacements from Switzerland for those pencils and um, they sent me some free um, blenders, the um, these these ones. So that was really kind of them and I'm not sure they will do that every time or to every person but if you do have problems with pencils it's always worth contacting the manufacturer and just explaining what's happening and what's wrong and it might be that there's a special technique that you don't know about that there's um there's or you know some advice or they can send you something for free or whatever now this is called warm earth this is a brown really i think but i've got a lily pad left so <laughs> it's gonna be this color yeah it's a brown it's a lovely shade look at that mm, it's not a lily pad shade as i say this is gonna look a little bit odd now i did get asked to color a picture from this book and i wouldn't recommend that you follow this um as a way of coloring this picture but you, what I would do is do the lily pads are all this colour. I would probably use this as the smoke green. But it's a little bit cold. I might use a yellow. There is a yellow ochre in this set, which I might have been tempted to use on top of the, uh, of the green to sort of warm it up a bit. But uh, as I say, for the sake of the exercise of uh, trying out all these gorgeous pencils, um, that's, these look like fried eggs. Mmm, <laughs> oh I do love fried eggs. I can't eat eggs. My, well, my stomach doesn't like them, <laughs> sadly. Oh dear, never mind. They're so good for us, eggs. Possibly not fried, but wow. Need a bit of oil, although there's a pat in eggs. So I was sort of reminded of something the other day that um, there are some a lot of um, B vitamins are fat soluble. So if you think you're being really healthy and you're eating um, cabbage soup, let's say, all those B vitamins don't get absorbed by the body because they're fat soluble. And if you haven't had any fat, then uh, your body doesn't hold on to them. They get flushed out of your system. So this is a brown ochre, it's really pretty. Um, what should we do in brown? Um, let's do these. I think these are rocks. Oh, it's a bit orangey, isn't it? Nice. Like it. I do like these earthy tones. That's why I was interested in this set. 
And then when I tried out one of the pencils, the softness really appealed to me. Now we have a very pale wheat colour. You get this colour in the... Um, in the... Uh, yeah. Um, in the... I'm going to get there in a minute. I'm sorry. I do apologise. The, um, the, the Light Fast set is quite pale, but I'm just doing the centre of these. I think they'd probably be black, to be honest, because they'd be the actual little tadpole, wouldn't they? But it's their wheat now. I think we do have some dark colours, but um, we'll get to those eventually. There we go. Now these little dots, I'm going to do the same colour as these, but I don't know what colour yet. What we have got here is a very lovely um, yellow ochre. And I'm actually going to use this for our frog, for his eye to start with. I'm just going to put a bit the top and bottom. Leave a bit of white, like shine. And now I'm going to use it for all his little dots and sort of details. I'm actually going to, I might do them green, but we haven't got any green left. We'll see in a minute when we get there. There we go. It's a nice colour. It's, again, it's slightly orangey, which is quite interesting. Doing all those little dots and bumps. There he is. I'm wondering whether to do the same on those two, but that one's so pale. Mm, I think we'll make them all look different. We've got quite a few more colours to try. This is a sepia red, so this is going to be really quite dark. Maybe we'll hear these dots. Now you're not going to see the full extent of this colour because it's got that other colour underneath. Actually, we'll do, we could do his um, fins as well in this, so you can see it properly. There is dots. Here it is. I'm going to try and do it a little darker by the body and a bit lighter towards the edge. So yeah, that really is a quite a brownish, reddish colour. It's not the sort of sepia that I love. It's a nice colour. The sepia I love is the polychromos dark sepia, which is the sort of browny grey. But this is a very different colour. It works rather well for our um, tadpole. Now we have, oops, we have a Mars orange. So this is quite a brownish orange. I'm going to use it for his dots. And for his sort of these thin parts, which are, they're growing out. And his tail is sort of disappearing, I guess, compared to this little chap. He's getting his legs as well. Okay, what have we got here? This is sanguine, so it's like a sort of almost terracotta colour. I'm going to do this frog in the sanguine. I'm going to keep it quite light. I don't want him to be really bright but you can see it's quite orangey. I don't know if frogs are this colour but I'm always tempted to do frogs in a green but he's not going to stand out from that lily pad so I figure he's better off in this sort of colour. It's quite bright isn't it? I thought these were all quite earthy. This one's quite bright but it's quite nice because this as I said, this page, um, the well, way um, Mel Pomony draws, it's often quite dark. So having something vibrant is uh, rather good. It's almost red, I think. I'm not, I'm trying not to press too hard because I think if it was any brighter, it would be a bit too much. Go all the way down his little arms, legs. I don't think they're arms, are they? That's a rather long toe, isn't it? I 
guess it helps with balance. I could do with one of those and do my yoga. <laughs> and what have we got here? We have got a Venetian red. I thought we would do this one with him. Now I realise that this is really quite browny dark, isn't it? Um, this is supposed to be the same critter. So I think in realistically you would want to use the same colours. But uh, it's just fun to try them out. Uh, this is yeah quite a dark brick type colour really rather nice there's a bit of green missing there whoops now we have a terracotta so I said this was terracotta it isn't really compared with this um I am going to do all these dots they wouldn't be they'd be black but I'm going to do them in terracotta Oh, excuse me, sniffing. Now we have got some leaves here, which is uh, going to be interesting. We'll see how we go. This is quite a similar colour to this and this. It's like a cross between those two, really, isn't it? It's a nice earthy tone. And we'll do the little bits in between, whoops, as well. I'm thinking I might leave those outside white. They really will look like fried eggs. <laughs> mm. I'm sure I'm at a, um, some frog spawn. Is it all toad spawn? It's a really, it's not toads don't look like this, do they? It's a really good alternative to um, fried egg. <laughs> Right, we now have an interesting um, colour. We have Mars Violet. It's a sort of purpley colour. And I'm going to use it for these flowers. So the flower centres and the very outside set of leaves. So you can have a better look at the colour on a slightly larger area. like that. As you can see, although it's sort of violet, it's quite a dark colour. And now we have a ruby earth, which I'm going to use for the rest of the flower. For the rest of these leaves, you'll see it's a much more sort of reddy, pinky colour. It's actually quite red, isn't it? I thought it would be a little bit more pink. Uh, that's rather nice. It go it will go very well with these sorts of colours, I think. There we go. Now where are we going? We have a chocolate. I think I'm gonna do these but I had said that I was gonna do them the same as this, but I think I'm gonna do them in these colour. It looks almost black. Isn't it? Almost black. My son's just finished streaming. I can hear them chatting away next door. It almost, yeah, looks really dark. Certainly a dark chocolate colour, that's for sure. There we go. And now we have ivory black. I'm wondering what to use black um, for, really. Um, I haven't really got anything, but it's black. Um, I know. Let's do some of these, oops, these dots, just so you can see it. It needs sharpening, it's too big. There we go, that's a bit better. So black dot, it's just black. It's nothing so different. I've got a couple of greys now. We've got the warm grey, so I'm expecting a sort of brownie grey. 
<laughs> Maybe these splashes. Yeah. You can see it's it's yeah, it's a little bit brownish to me. Definitely a warm grey. Now guess what the next one is? It's the cool grey. Now, um where should we go with a cool grey? We could do these swirls, but I was going to do them this colour. We could do these leaves. We haven't done the leaves. Let's do those. I know it's grey. It's not really the right colour. But let's just go for it. Now I'm not going to finish this page with you. But I think I've coloured every element. So you should be able to finish it on your own. If you have any Derwent pencils, whether they be the Soft Touch or the um, um, Light Fast or even the Chroma Flow, you might be able to find very similar colours to what I've used and, uh, and finish it off. I'm just Now we've got water in here and I think I would do take that colour for the water, um, which was the... Um, We use the smoky, the smoke blue for that. That's the Solway blue. That's the um, ink blue. So I'm going to finish this off anyway with my um, nice pencils. We have the last one. I'm just going to show you actually, which is the um, Chinese white. I'm not going to use it on this page, I'm not going to be able to see it. I'm just going to try it out, apparently it's a really good white. So here's my notebook, I'm going to colour it here. You can have a look at it, it's quite yellowy. I come in really close. Still coming in. You can see how it's covered the line up a little bit. It's quite yellowy. Let's see how it sits. So here is our ink blue, which is our really dark one. So I've swatched it there. Sorry, I was shot. Take the white. Let's see what happens. Look at that. That uh, sits on top really nicely. Look at how beautiful. Makes it such a pretty colour. I love that colour. Ah, oh, it's gorgeous. I'm just cleaning the tip off. So it really mixes beautifully. So I wonder what it looks like. I'm going to try it with the sepia. I'm nosy now. This is our sepia red. See how thick it can go down if you press hard. I haven't been pressing that hard, of course. Oh, look at that. You can get a much lighter, really pretty colour. Hmm. I'm certainly going to be playing around with that. So uh, that's our white. So it's a very, very good white. I would say. I'm quite interested to see how it goes down on black paper. But I don't have any. Oh, I do. Hang on. I have some black paper. I'm going to Let's come out a little bit. Let's get rid of that um, scruffy bit of paper. This is my planner. Um, we have some black here. This is the cover of the planner. Um, oh, look at that. See how much better that is than the white that I used. Wow, that's really impressive. Mm. Right, I'm going to stop playing. It's been fun. But uh, I was just going to have a little look and see what was written on the back of the tin before I finished. And what I'll do is I'm going to finish this picture in my own time. Just push the pencils back in the tin. I'll put the lid on and look at the back. 
um, yeah, as I say, I'm going to finish this book and I'll put a, pic, a, um, a photo up at the end of the video of the completed picture. So it just says highly light, fast drawing pencils. Derwent drawing pencils are highly light fast and have a unique creamy texture which produce a soft velvety finish. Drawing pencils are a versatile drawing tool with an extra thick core and a high pigmentation creating a dense colour application. These wax based pencils work beautifully with both dry and water soluble mediums available in a range of 24. Light fast colours in neutral, sepia and muted tones. So here we are. So these are all the 24 in this set. So although, yeah, you could definitely see that the cores were thick, but there's the picture on the tin. You can get really thin lines from the looks of it. But uh, yeah, I'm really, really liking those earthy tones. And I think they work really well in this book. But I'm going to, as I say, finish this off. What I might do is uh, I'll probably go over some of the bits that I've done already. I might try and make these... Um, lily pads all the same colour. I might use this dark one on them all and uh, just adjust a few bits and pieces but I will show you the finished, pi the finished picture at the end of the video um, so you can have a little look and see um, how it all comes because this is a bit scruffy because I you know I didn't sharpen them and I was going quite quickly so uh, I shall have a play with them but uh, for now I hope that was okay um, I had a lot of fun and a big thank you again to Tanya um, for sending me those. She's very kind and uh, yeah, very exciting. So thank you so much. Have a really lovely day and happy colouring.